Now, after more than 28 years behind bars, the man dubbed the station Strangler has been released on parole. Norman Afzal Simons was accused of being a serial killer after the bodies of 22 boys were found in shallow graves in Cape Town between 1986 and 1994. However, he was convicted for the murder of only one 10-year-old, Elroy van Rooyen. Now, Simons was a teacher at the Alpine Primary School in Mitchell's Plain at the time of his arrest. Now, there are mixed feelings about his release. Aisha Ishmael reports. Norman Simons' arrest, conviction and sentencing made headlines at the time. Now, almost three decades later, his release on parole is topping the news again. Freddy Engelbrecht, a former area manager at Paulsmoor Prison and Correctional Services Deputy Commissioner, says Simons has maintained his innocence for all the years he's been in prison. My experience about Simons, he's a very warm person. He's a very friendly person. He is highly intelligent. And uh, the, he's being respected by fellow inmates as well as correctional officials because he knows how to treat people. He was a, he was a teacher in, as a profession and he came over as a very professional person and he knows what people want and what people need and he is humble, respectful, friendly. This is how I experience uh, uh, Simons. He says Simons taught other prisoners in various subjects. He was also a librari librarian and um, he was also very much involved in the rugby, soccer, all sports coach. And uh, this is the way that he has spent his time in correct. But what happened is that at the States I saw him teaching juveniles when I visited the medium B prison. And uh, I found the area manager by then. And I told him that, listen, yes, this guy can't be amongst kids. You must take him away. And he took him immediately away from Medium B prison. Engelbrecht says Simons would always say that one day he would tell his own story. He says being released on parole is a thorough and lengthy process. I am aware that the minister have asked various professional people, psychiatrists, psychologists, criminologists, uh, Falcon Medical Hospital, he was referred to by the psychiatrist from uh, Paul uh, uh, Medic Clinic. And uh, every time they was asking a further profile, and the psychiatrist was saying in, in one of the reports that uh, he can't make an assessment because there's no children around him. So the test is whether you will be out and there's children outside, then they will do a proper, they can do a proper assessment. Engelbrecht believes that Simons is still a risk and it is for this reason that his parole conditions are so strict. Uh, God knows I will never trust him with children. That's my personal viewpoint. But he says Simons has served his time and must be given a second chance. Yeah, I had no choice. Investigative journalist Henriette Haldenes is not convinced that the right man was convicted. Let's start with the case that he was convicted of, the Elroy van Rooyen case. In that case, there was a witness who claimed to have seen the boy Elroy with Norman Simons shortly before the boy was killed. Now, that eyewitness identification from Fosia Hercules, it was very weak. She said she thinks he looks a little bit like that man that she saw. That is not a clear identification. Um, how the court could have accepted that as a reasonable identification is beyond me. Having covered Simon's court appearances religiously, Haldane says he made confessions under pressure and told police what they wanted to hear. I think the court made a mistake by finding that they were made voluntarily. I think they were made under extreme duress. She believes politics also played a role. Uh, the National Party uh, wanted to um, gain the Western Cape province. Um, it was two weeks before the demo first democratic elections, and um, uh, I think there was intense pressure 
from them to arrest someone before the elections because they wanted to win that election. And to win that election, they needed the colored vote. And for that to happen, they needed to have shown that they arrested somebody. And that is how I think Norman Simons found himself in the middle of all this chaos. And it's possible that he is completely innocent of all the charges leveled against him. She recalls the public outcry when Simons was released on bail in 1995. The magistrate in the bail application did not think that he was a station stranger suspect, otherwise he would not have released him on bail. And the magistrate in that case, Joey Moses, as you know, he said it's deplorable and frightening that Simons was connected to the station strangler killings. But once out on bail, Simons had nowhere to go and his life was in danger. He asked to be sent back to jail. And the court made an unprecedented order, the first time in the history of this country, to send a man back to jail who is actually out on bail, because it was the only way to protect his life. She says the identicates were highly questionable. Aisha Ismail, Cape Town.